speaking on what to do when you don't know what to do. Amen. What to do when you don't know what to do. And the first thing that we need to acknowledge is we need to acknowledge that we know that we don't know what to do. We need to acknowledge that we are at a point where we reach a dead end. We are at a point where there is no exit for us to come out. I'm not speaking about the general crisis that everybody goes through like the financial crisis. I'm speaking about an individual situation. A situation that you are living at a particular point in your life whereby you don't know how to come out of such situation. In one way or the other, most of us have gone through that. It might be through a broken relationship. You found yourself in such a way that you felt that there is no way out. Recently, on the 1st of, of, of January, I lost a dear friend of mine through cancer. She was 26 years old. Until today, the mother is broken. You know, when the news came to me, I didn't know what to do. I was caught up with questions, Lord, why? You might find yourself in a situation where your marriage is breaking down or even where you got divorced and you can't fulfill that emptiness inside you. And you continue to ask, Lord, why me? Why did the devil come to knock my way? You might find yourself in a situation of betrayal. Somebody that you trusted and this person let you down. And you find yourself, why me? All these and other questions are things that you go through individually as a person. You go through that pain alone. You might be looking beautiful. You might even go to the hair saloon and do your hair. But inside, you are dying. Inside, you are empty. You are looking for solutions. And once you find yourself in that position, there are three things that happen to you. The number one is fear. You start fearing the future. You start seeing that everything is black. You can't see the silver lining in the sky anymore. Number two is doubt. You start doubting the existence of God. You start doubting the faithfulness of people. God, why? God, where were you? And the one that I want to concentrate most is when you go through the first one, fear, doubt, you start losing your faith and you enter into a stage of depression. Statistics has it that most people suffer from depression. Somewhere, somehow in their lives, they suffer from depression. And that's where we need to say that you need to know and acknowledge that you don't know what to do. And very quickly, some of the symptoms of depression, number one is sadness. You just feel caught up in a very sad situation. You are continuously sad. Even though you are amongst people that are rejoicing, but you are just continuously sad. Amen? Number two is hopelessness. You feel like you just want to go away. And the worst part of it is that you don't know where to. You know, when I was going through, like I said in the first service, please understand I'm preaching to myself as well. When I was going through the most difficult time of my life, I felt like packing everything and just disappearing. Where I don't know. Where I don't know. At times, I would just come into my car at 1 o'clock in the morning and just start driving. I'll just go and drive and drive and drive. You feel that you have lost a sense of direction in life. People that go through depression, they feel irritable. 
you are continuously irritated. You irritate people that are around you. It's even worse if you are married. You know, I've just learned something that women go through what they call postnatal depression. P and D. And if you don't understand that, you find that this person is continuously crying and you don't know why. Amen? You find that this person just doesn't want to talk. Honey, what's wrong? Nothing. But this person is depressed. This person is so sad. And unfortunately, it starts destroying your home. Amen. And then another symptom is insomnia. The lack of sleep. Some people, when they go through depression, either they sleep too much or they sleep too little. Fortunately for men, I think they go on the side that they sleep very little. They can't sleep at all. You'll see a man awake most of the time at night. And to women, you see them not waking up. They sleep the whole day. They just don't feel like doing anything. They just want to sleep. You know that those are some of the symptoms of depression. Weight gain or weight loss. Thank you, Pastor. You know, some of us are taking advantage of the weather. <laughs> Amen. But it doesn't matter what you eat. Whether you eat salads or you just drink water or you do whatever. Because of the state that you find yourself in, you just tend to gain weight. You tend to have a sweet tooth. Cakes, sweet things and everything. And there are some people that they go through weight loss. In a month, they lose 10, 15 kg. I have a friend who went through a divorce. When I looked at him, I got scared. He had lost about 10 or 15 kilos in a month. He says, Teddy, you don't know what I'm going through. I say, yes, I do. But you don't need to look like this. Some people, when they go through depression, even going to a shower is like walking 100 kilometers. Yeah, you might be laughing, but it's true. You just don't feel like doing anything. You are completely hopeless. Your self-esteem is its lowest. And you know what? They start having a behavioral change. There are young people that cut themselves. I saw somebody for counseling, and she was showing me the blade razor how they cut themselves when they are in that stage. Some people's behavior start changing up to the extent that they either become alcoholics, drug abusers, all kinds of substances. People that you have never seen them drunk, you are going to see them drunk. They start sleeping around everywhere. People go through this kind of behaviors and we, as the church, are the ones to judge them. Not knowing what they are going through. You know, once I started understanding this, you know the first thing that came to my mind was when they brought the woman that was caught up in adultery. And Jesus Christ, they were telling Jesus Christ all the bad things about this woman. Jesus Christ didn't look up. He was just writing. Until today, nobody knows what he was writing. But we just know that people were going away. Because they'll come and see their name and their sins. And say, hey. And they'll move 